we hit 1,000 subscribers. That's pretty good. Consider this. The goal for the end of 2016 was 100 subscribers. I actually said that in a tweet a while back. I'm not sure if I found a photo of that, but maybe. But yeah, the goal for the end of 2016 was 100 subscribers, and we surpassed that quite a bit. So for the 1,000 subscriber special, I will be answering your questions. I was originally going to do something else, but I'll do that for 10,000, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just say that. 10,000, I'll do something else. Because originally I didn't expect to get too many comments with the questions and stuff, but I got 58 comments here, so I'm just gonna make this a completely Q&A video. So without further ado, let's start. The first question comes from Mad Evie, who is asking what my favorite generation is. A lot of people actually asked this, I think. Yeah, like 10 people asked that. So I'll just answer for you all now. My favorite generation is probably Generation 5, just because uh, Black 2 and White 2, they're probably my favorite Pokemon games besides Sun and Moon, but that generation isn't really complete yet. Pokemon um, Sun and Moon is the only game in Generation 7, so I can't really say that yet. But as of right now, excluding Generation 7, Generation 5 is my favorite. The next question comes from Pokeraf, and he asks, What is your favorite Alola form? Probably uh, Marowak, because that looks cool with the flames and stuff. Glazen Gaming asks, Can I have your channel? No. Pokemon Trainer K, Nintendo Pokemon, and more asks my favorite Pokemon. And also, how did I come up with the name for my channel? So my favorite Pokemon is Porygon Z. I think I mentioned that a while back in some video for Tuesday. I don't know which one, but yeah, I did mention that Porygon Z is my favorite Pokemon. You can actually do a lot of different strategies with it because it's kind of a powerhouse. And also, it looks cool and it's digitally related because I like computers. Hello. Darkness, my old friend. And then the name for my channel, I was just like, hey, I'm Pokemaster, Pokemon, it works. And also I'm legendary, so yeah, yeah, that works out, that works out. I'm legendary, and I make Pokemon videos, and I'm a master at it. Yeah, so yeah, I honestly just came up with something random. Terrible Fate asks, what is your favorite battle music in Pokemon Sun and Moon? That would probably be the Kahuna theme, just because it's like uplifting and uh, Pokemon games usually don't have that type of uh, music. It's just fun. Lugia65 asks, how long does it take for you to finish a Pokemon game? Usually I get it done within like a week, just because I just play it nonstop. I like complete even the post game in like a week just because I'm hyped for it and then I'm like, hey, I have nothing left to do. I'm mad about that. Just a Pokefan asks, Mega Absol or Mega Audino? Mega Absol, because it looks awesome. Nicholas Rivetto asks, what program do you use to edit and make thumbnails? First off, I don't really make my thumbnails anymore. I used to. Um, I make them with my video editor. I used to make them with my video editor, but now Shadowkin makes my thumbnails, which I highly appreciate because they're much better, I think. And then to edit, that's a trade secret, I guess, but I'll give you a hint. It's purple. Ryan the Beaver asks, what is your favorite Pokemon theme song? I actually think the Kahuna theme is pretty good. Yeah, that's the only one that comes to mind at this point, so, yeah. Purple Ant asks, what do you like to do when you're finished with the Pokemon video games? Um, I guess you're referring to, like, in the game, like, the post-game. I usually try to, um, collect a bunch of rare Pokemon that I like. I don't try to catch them all, really, because that's a bit, um, time-consuming and hard and takes a lot of effort. So basically, I just collect the Pokemon that I like and train them to level 100. Sometimes I also battle on Wi-Fi, but yeah. Gareth Gaming asks, who was your first Pokemon? That would be Tepig, because Black 2 was my first Pokemon game, actually. I know that kind of sounds sad, like 2012, not too long ago, but yeah. My first Pokemon was technically Tepig, because that was my starter in Pokemon Black 2. And yeah. Eddie Rated Edgar asks, is Red your favorite trainer? I'm just wondering, or do you prefer Ash? I actually think Red is like a boss, so that's why I chose him to be my mascot. Ash is pretty cool too, but I just think that Red is kind of cooler. Trash Shadow asks, what is your favorite legendary Pokemon? That would probably have to go to Groudon, just because Groudon has a lot of power, and also it can do the primal reversion thing. That's also pretty useful, because then it's basically like Mega Evolution, like I said in the last video, the Tuesday video this week. Immin Morshed asks what my favorite evil team is. That would probably be, um, that's actually a hard one. Either Team Skull or Team Rocket, just because they do a lot, and, um, they basically do nothing, but they also do a lot at the same time, and that's kind of the twist. 
They could also be comedic, so yeah. Unidentified Penguin asks, what is your favorite NPC from Pokemon? I'd say that Silver is pretty good just because he's like my favorite rival because he has the best backstory. Doomhound63 asks, who is your favorite gym leader slash Elite Four member? My favorite gym leader is probably Brock because he has a lot of character in the anime and also his gym's kind of easy to kind of just walk around that one trainer and go straight to him. Edward Siegel and Electrochamp88 asks, Can someone subscribe to me? Yes, they have the physical capability to subscribe to you. Surfing Kyogre asks, Do I like or hate memes? I'm pretty sure every YouTuber likes memes. My favorite is We Are Number One, which is actually pretty funny. Mr. Mr. Mango Head, I'm talking about you. Kyogre's Hideout asks, if you could fuse any two Pokemon, which Pokemon would you fuse? I'd say Reshiram and Zekrom to see what that fusion was before, because it said that one Pokemon split into Zekrom and Reshiram, and that would be kind of cool if they were fused together to see what that was like. Pepinunis2505 asks, what Mega Evolution do you want to see next? Porygon Z. Watersafest asks, what would your top three favorite Poketubers be? And what are your top three favorite non-Poketubers? Oh, you guys are making me think. First off, my favorite Poketuber is probably a Brandon's the past because he's pretty, uh, comedic. And also, I kind of got his editing style from there. He's uh, an inspiration to my channel. That's actually kind of why I started Poketubing is because Brandon is cool. Although I don't watch him too much, my second favorite is probably MNJ TV Pokevids just because, uh, he yeah, does a lot of cool stuff, like the, uh, Pokemon talk that was pretty cool. And also he comes up with some good top 10 lists and theories. And also third would be Tamashi Hiroka, probably just because she comes up with a lot of, uh, good top 10s. They're pretty entertaining. And then my top three non-Poketubers. Hello, darkness. My favorite non-Poketuber is Mr. Beast, just because the, uh, the worst intros is actually pretty funny. And then his other videos are also really entertaining, so I basically watch him every day because he uploads every day usually. Second I would have to say is probably Mr. Mr. Mangohead because I watch him a lot. All of his uh, Let It Grow and We Are Number One uh, remixes, remixes are pretty uh, entertaining to say the least. And then for third, I'd probably have to say Peanut Butter Gamer because once again, He's pretty entertaining. That's why I basically watch YouTube for humor, and he actually does it pretty well. I also took a lot of influence from his editing style. Pika Plays HD asks, why are you so awesome? Because not only do I have one, but I have two pro gaming PCs. Yeah, these are my pro gaming PCs. That's what just makes my videos so awesome. Uh, I edit with these. Uh, the fans are not very loud. And also, it has CD-ROM input. He also asks what my favorite Pokemon game is. That is probably Pokemon Black 2 because it has a lot of stuff to do. And also, what made me decide to start YouTube? Basically, a brand into the past to make Poketubing look cool to me, so I just decided to start it. Blue Hoodie Squirtle asks, how do you think your journey has been as a whole, and what are your plans for 2017? Well, first off, my journey, um, basically it's actually been pretty, like, exciting when I suddenly get a big sub or view boost. It's like, oh, people actually watch my videos. So that's basically what I could describe it as. I'm not really good at describing uh, anything, really. And my plans for 2017, I plan to try to work with some new people that I haven't really worked with before or communicate with people. I like to make new friends in the community. And also, I'd like to communicate with my fans a bit more. Maybe do some more face cam videos like this because, um, I don't know. Woolworth asks, have you ever accidentally KO'd or ran away from a shiny Pokemon? I actually do not remember because if I did that, I would probably think it was a glitch and turned off in my uh, early years of playing the Pokemon games. And I haven't really seen a shiny in the wild since then, since like 2013 or something. I think I ran away from it, yeah. And then finally, Simbri Plays asks, what is my setup? So this is my setup from an external view. This is a tripod that I use to film. I previously used this music stand, actually, to film until I got this tripod recently. Uh, it works very well. It actually fits the iPod that I use to, uh, record, and here is my chair. My chair is, uh, basically a regular chair from Staples. There are the two N64s that I used before. Actually, no, these are the pro gaming PCs. Mm. Yeah, you see that? The dust. This is pro gaming dust. Here's a lamp that I put on a chair just to light my face up, and I also have the lamp over here. And then there's a bunch of wires down there leading to those lamps. Over here is the famous desk 
that I put Pokemon cards on when I'm doing like an unboxing or something. I actually have unopened Ocarina of Time Link. I'm going to focus in on that. And also a Boo Amiibo, which does glow in the dark quite well. Here are all my Pokemon cards. And actually, back here is some code cards. A Zelda Twilight Princess box, which I hate. I would hate to throw away. Some tissues, uh, sunglasses, those sunglasses. Here's my uh, charging stand for the 3DS. Some cassettes. This is um, the screen to a GoPro that is actually up here. And then also some hand sanitizer. Power banks. Down here's a piece of paper. That's just the best part, right? That piece of paper right there. And then here's the 3DS stylus, which is out of the 3DS currently. Um, that's a code card. There's my 3DS that I use to record. A GameCube number one and GameCube number two. That has uh, Worms 3D in it, and that has Happy Feet, which is a Just Dance ripoff. Just saying, both of these work. And also, here's a Wii that I haven't gotten to test yet, actually. Um, it's just for display currently, but maybe I will either use it or resell it. And then, here is an iPod 4th generation. It should work currently, or maybe it's dead. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it's probably dead. Okay. Up here's the cassette player for those cassettes. It's a Panasonic, and I think it's from like 1989... Or maybe before that a bit. Also, here's a USB. That's just the best part. And also, I forgot about this flip camera, which I bought at a garage sale. It doesn't quite work. It has a... When it has the batteries in it, it uh, dies almost instantly. But it has this cool USB thing that slides out the side. Okay, yeah, so I just plugged that in, and it does work just to show you guys that. And there, from the previous video, is the awesome poster thing for that. Over here on this wall, I have a bunch of fan arts and stuff that I drew myself. Yeah, if you want to send me a fan art for some reason, you can actually DM And then over here, we have all the handhelds. This is a Game Boy Color. Game Boy Original, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Color. This is the Game Boy Color I usually use. The Game Boy Advance SP, actually AGS-101, the one with the bright screen. And then also here are a few others. I actually forgot to mention, there's one over here. This one is an AGS-001. Here are two AGS-001s, you can tell by the difference in the screen. Here's an original Game Boy Advance. Battery, sir. Still alive. Here are 3DS lights. They all work, except this one has a snap tinge, but it still works. Here is a NES copy of Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, which I can't use because I don't have an NES. And there's a Game Boy Advance SP charger back here. Here's the case for that. The uh, 3DS XL. And then down here we have my favorite DS slash 3DS games that I like to play besides Pokemon. Pokemon has its own section over there, but we'll get to that. Here is the box for my MacBook Pro, which is not currently uh, here, but the MacBook Pro. That's the machine that I use to edit every video, including the video that you are currently watching. So basically out of this box came every video that you have ever seen from me for the past year or so. There's a pencil. Here is a redeemed a copy of Trend Micro Internet Security. And then here's the Pokedex that I previously reviewed. A few cards, code cards from previous events. All of the uh, 3DS and DS Pokemon games that I have down here are the uh, Game Boy versions. I actually have, I believe, Pokemon Red, yes, in that Game Boy, and Pokemon Blue in this one. And here's another copy of Pokemon Silver. This one has a good save battery. These two, Gold and Silver, over here do not. Omega Ruby, Rumble Blast, Sun and Moon is in, actually right here, it's, yeah, there's the Sun, and then Moon is somewhere. <laughs> uh, there's a GameCube memory card, and there's a bunch of DS games, and um, here's a Pokemon Walker. There's some unopened Pokemon packages back there, and here is a Team Mystic, even though I'm not Team Mystic, but it's a Team Mystic um, bracelet, that's pretty cool. And then finally, the final layer is below that, these are all the... Uh, Game Boy games that I have. This is a uh, Zelda Oracle of Ages, and then a Super Mario Land Tetris, Tetris 2, Pac-Man, Tetris DX, a bunch of others that I don't feel like picking up right now, and a few DS games, assorted DS games, Sticker Star, Smash Bros for 3DS, uh, Super Mario 64 DS, even though I do have that on the N64 as well, and um, there's a Leapster LMAX back there. And this chalice um, doesn't have anything in it. Here's Lego Battles, a very underrated game, I'm just telling you that. 
You, you guys should get that. That's actually a really good game, LEGO Battles. Here's the manual for Oracle of Ages. And then here are some assorted pins and knickknacks, because you can't have a display without these. So thank you for 1,000 subscribers, guys. It really means a lot to me because it gives me a shot on YouTube to go even higher. And who knows how big this channel could get. Every person who's subscribed has done me a huge favor, and I can't really ever make it up to you guys. Here's a small gift. It is one code. So that is the 1,000 subscriber Q&A. It's a little bit of a break from the usual, and we will have Tuesday videos up naturally on Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed, and if for some reason I didn't answer your question, which I think I did answer everyone's questions, please leave a comment down below and I will answer them in the comments. But thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.